Hello there and welcome. In this video we're talking about how to grow marine macroalgae. Now when most people talk about macroalgae, they tend to only be referring to the kind of algae you're going to be growing in a sump. Lots of people keep refugiums and most people do it because they want to reduce their nitrates and phosphates in their tank in an easy and natural way. However, when I think about growing macroalgae, it's actually growing it within your aquarium as part of the display. Now, not everybody is gonna want macroalgae in their display because it won't fit with their design. However, in my opinion, there's always a place for a little bit of macroalgae in any reef tank. In the wild, algae will be growing in almost every situation when it comes to coral reefs, whether it be nuisance hair algae or if it's some species of calerpa, there's always going to be some kind of algae in that area. Now in this aquarium, you can see it's chocked full of macroalgae. Now I've done this because the idea for this aquarium is a lagoon, and it's a lagoon for keeping pipefish and seahorse. Obviously seahorse like a lot of algae, as the pipefish, it's their natural kind of environment. And that's why I've done it in here. However, this has led me to understand algae a little bit. I'm going to share with you a little bit of the knowledge I've learned. The first thing is there are many types of algae, but they can be broken down into three types. Greens, reds and browns. Now greens and reds are probably the most common you're going to see in the aquarium hobby and normally the most attractive. However, browns do make an appearance every now and then. When it comes to greens, most people are going to think about calerpas as these are the most common kinds of algae you're going to find in the hobby. However, there are other green algae available, such as Halamidia, Ulva, and various others. When it comes to red algae, these are a little bit harder and normally a bit more expensive to find. But the most common one you're going to find is probably the one at the back there, which is the bamboo red algae, or things like this, the red fern. When it comes to algae, you need to treat them a lot like plants. Basically, you're creating a marine planted aquarium, a lot like a freshwater aquarium, with all the same needs. However, algae are slightly different to plants. The first, the first thing is that they are not a multicellular organism. They're actually one large cell, which is unbelievable when you think this entire part here is one cell, but it's true. So just like any plant type organism, they need good lighting. Lighting is probably the most important thing when it comes to marine algae. If you get that wrong, just like corals, they're not going to grow. The second thing is nutrients. Now, plants require nutrients such as nitrates and phosphates, and as do macroalgae. Now, you may think that this is a great thing because they're going to suck out all the nitrates and phosphates from your aquarium, and you're going to have the most perfect water ever. Well, this is true for a while, but the problem with these things is once they've used up all the nitrates and phosphates, they won't do as well. So you may find yourself in a situation where you need to dose nitrates and phosphates, and I've actually had to do that in this aquarium. So when it comes to nutrients, be prepared to actually add some to the tank. One particular nutrient which I found to be a huge limiting factor in this aquarium is iron. I'm dosing iron into this tank every week. It has no adverse effect on any of the corals, but it makes the plants thrive. So remember to keep up your nutrient dosing, just as you would with corals. Now, the third thing, and that is in particular to colerpas, is colerpas like to do a thing called going sexual. Now, going sexual, if you read a lot of forums, sounds like it's gonna happen every week and it's gonna always destroy your aquarium because of the release of nutrients. But it won't normally do this if you take a few precautions. So what going sexual means is when the colerpa reaches a certain size um, or density within your aquarium or if it runs out of nutrients it will decide that it needs to go sexual and release all of its spores and eggs into the water to reproduce. This normally means that the algae will go completely see-through, release everything inside of it and pollute your tank making it go a real milky colour. This I've found is actually easily avoidable in two ways. The first way is to make sure that you keep your algae cut up into small pieces. That way it will never reach that population density which makes it want to go sexual. The second way 
is to make sure it never runs out of any nutrients. And that's, and as already discussed, that's done by dosing nitrates, phosphates, ions, and other micro and macro nutrients into the aquarium. If you follow those guidelines, then you'll probably find that your colerpas don't actually go sexual that often. And if they do go sexual, they're limited to only small sections of algae. And in this way, you guarantee that your tank won't be wiped out. Other than that, most colerpas are really easy to grow and will flourish in most aquariums. Other green algae that you'll commonly find in an aquarium are the non-colerpa green algae. This is an example here, this is ulva, and this is basically sea cabbage. This can be quite invasive, but it is a really fast grower and will strip nutrients out of your aquarium really quickly. Another good use for ulva is the fact that it can be fed to most tangs and angelfish and they will devour it. This kind of green algae won't go sexual and it will just grow and grow and grow and just strip nutrients out of your aquarium. So let's talk about red algae. Now red algae are red because they come from a deeper part of the ocean and they're red because they use a different wavelength to the green algae. So because of this, red algae tend to grow a little bit slower and they don't like as intense lighting as their green counterparts. However, this doesn't mean that they're any harder to keep, you just need to treat them differently. They're basically the soft coral of the algae world and if you understand what I mean by that, it basically translates as they need to be kept in the darker areas, a bit lower flow and let them grow at their own pace. The good thing about red algae is they actually are quite attractive, some will fluoresce in your aquarium and unlike the colerpas they will never go sexual, so they're quite a good ornamental algae. Because of this they do commonly find themselves in the main parts of pe people's reef aquariums. Now that's basically it for red algae, they're not very complicated beings. I would say that the green colerpas are probably the most difficult to keep in fact, you have to manage them and trim them just like you would a normal plant. So there are other kinds of algae on the market available. Here's an example. This is a blue bush algae. It's only blue from the top, which is a shame, but it does fluoresce really nicely from the surface of the water. Now these are quite difficult to get your hands on. I think they're only available from certain suppliers. However, it is a fantastic algae. It's a really easy to keep one, very, very fast growing, and it's kind of hard and spiky which is an unusual texture for an algae. The only problem with this one is it can be a little bit fast growing and possibly aggressive. You can see if we go around the side here it's completely overwhelmed this SPS coral and killed off some of the other SPS corals around it. So just bit bear in mind. To be honest though most algae will be like that. They'll grow until they overtake everything around them. So one thing to note about algae is they do require a lot of maintenance. You do need to treat them exactly as if you were growing freshwater aquarium plants. They need regular trimming, they need plenty of food, plenty of light. But once you get them down, you do create a very attractive kind of aquarium and very different to what you'd find normally around most people's houses. Lots of people go for the huge walls of rock with corals all over it, but not many people go the natural route. And I feel that macroalgae are a more natural environment for your fish to live in. This, in my opinion, is more like the environment they'd find in the wild rather than the huge amounts of Australian brightly coloured corals you get in most people's aquariums. Obviously having macroalgae in your main display won't suit everybody because some fish like to eat macroalgae, so do bear in mind if you're going to be growing this kind of thing in your aquarium you are pretty much ruling out any chance of keeping most tangs, any fox faces. Some angels are going to strip your aquarium of, of macroalgae. So it is a targeted kind of aquarium. If you are going to be growing macroalgae, do bear in mind that. However, I think the loss of certain species of fish is more than worth it when it comes to the natural environment you're going to be creating. But it's not going to be for everyone, I appreciate that. Another benefit of having lots of algae in your aquariums is they do give a home to a lot of the microfauna in your tank. So what you'll find is if you get a big dense jungle of algae like this, this is basically a copepod and amphipod farm. It's going to be pumping out lots of little bugs that one are going to be eating a lot of the nuisance algae in your tank, like the hair algae and the green dot algae, 
but also they're going to be a constant supply of food for your fish. Also, when you have a huge growth of macroalgae in your aquarium, it will help to keep your water crystal clear. It will strip a lot of the bad things from your water, like the nitrates and phosphates, giving you an overall cleaner and clearer aquarium. When planning your macroalgae aquarium, it's actually important to understand where different types of algae will live. So not all algae are the same. For instance, this Calerpa prolifera will only really grow along the bottom of the aquarium, slightly over the rockwork, but mainly along the sand bed. Whereas other types of Calerpa, such as this Racemosa, will happily grow over the top of the rockwork. So just like in a planted aquarium, you need to create layers of different types of algae to get a nice overall effect. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's been helpful in educating you a little bit on how to grow macro algae. If you do have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Please like this video if you've enjoyed it and do subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. Don't forget to visit my Patreon page. It does help out if you do become a patron of my channel. Thank you for watching and happy fish keeping.